Let me ask you something. One of my strengths is when needed, I have high levels of focus on a given task, whereby I can concentrate on it without procrastinating or being distracted. Is this something you'd like? Given you're here, I'd assume yes. Is this something unique to me or a small group of esoteric people? No. It's a skill that all of us can learn and develop. So in this video, I'm going to give you tips on how to improve your focus and concentration on a given task. For this video, I'm going to use a breakdown that was given by Jordan Peterson, who I think explained it in a succinct and useful way for anyone to apply. So without wasting time, how can you maintain focus on a task? Regulate habits. The starting point of building up your focus is to initially assess your day-to-day -day routines to help set you up for a positive day ahead. Why is this? Well, our circadian rhythm, or body clock, plays a huge role in our energy levels and consistency in state and mood on a day-to-day -day basis. Humans, like most animals, have a need for a routine and so when they follow a clear routine, it helps to regulate mood and function in the body, notably with us regulating when we feel more alert and ready to work. Other critical areas to also be focusing in on is to make sure that you give yourself time and opportunity to eat a healthy diet and get some form of exercise, both of which are critical in how we perform. In the case of diet, eating a rich and nutritious diet that's well balanced will help you feel more energetic, with numerous studies today showing how it influences our mood and cognitive health, meaning it's something that needs to be managed for your overall well-being. Exercise is similar, with it helping us feel more energetic as adrenaline levels increase and help put us in a state of alert. After all, we've evolved as creatures that need to be active and move. Not only does a person who regularly gets exercise have greater energy levels, but again, it significantly improves mood as dopamine and serotonin release in the brain, helping you feel happier and less stressed, critical in functioning at your best when working. This all focuses on a high level lifestyle choice, but fundamentally, what do you need to consider when you actually sit down at a desk ready to get to work? Well, first and foremost, you need to schedule time. Scheduling your time is fundamental in making the most efficient use of your time to hit targets that you want to hit. However, before you schedule your time, you should focus on developing a long-term plan, so you have a clear direction to work towards and can reverse engineer to help you to identify the individual tasks that you need to do to reach that goal. So let's say you've developed a long-term plan and have a clear goal you're working towards, and have identified what tasks need to be done to complete this. What do you do? Well, it's at this point you need to design your days to allow you to complete these tasks. That means set aside time in your daily routine for work, assigning what task will be done at what time, and follow a timetable you set up for yourself. Don't forget, we also live in an age where we have constant access to a calendar in our pocket. Not only does this calendar allow us to organise our days, but will alert us when it's time to start or stop. So utilise technology if you can to help benefit you. Now, some of you might be getting put off with the idea of a schedule, and honestly this isn't too infrequent. After all, when growing up, a schedule is often viewed as a prison preventing us from having the day we want. Most of us need to wake up at a certain time to get ready for school. Then we go to school and our day is governed by set class times that we need to attend, otherwise we risk getting in trouble. From here you come home tired, are told to eat dinner at a set time, and then go to bed at a set time as well minimising the time you actually get to do something you enjoy. As a kid, it's normal to think of a schedule as restrictive. But, and this is a big but, a schedule as you grow older serves a very different function. You see, no longer is your routine and schedule being dictated by the people, rather it's something that you control. This means it's no longer restrictive as you may have previously perceived it to be. Instead, it's something that liberates you to help you set up your ideal day. So importantly, as you grow older, you need to remember that a schedule isn't a prison, it's a choice that helps you live life as you hope to. And you may not hit that schedule perfectly, that's okay. Instead, work to incrementally grow. Here's the thing, if we set up a schedule, it's going to be challenging to hit it 100% every day when we have so much to try and juggle in life. 
As you grow older, your responsibilities pile up, and with them, you can often hit unforeseen circumstances that can prevent you from the day you intended to have. This is okay. Sometimes you need to just move on. Other times, you can learn from them. One of the biggest difficulties people have when trying to set up a schedule is they pressure themselves to do too much too quickly, usually resulting in them struggling to do what they wanted to do. Think of it this way. When you start eating healthier, it's often difficult to go cold turkey on all sweet snacks. You can feel a sense of withdrawal symptoms coming on. Instead, allowing yourself a little or controlled amount is often more effective in the short term. The same goes with building positive habits in your schedule. If you want to read, then rather than saying that you need to read one hour each day, start with just 10 to 15 minutes, working your way up slowly after you've had a few days of success. In effect, you build the habit to at least show up, which is often half the battle when following a schedule, which can then be built up as showing up becomes a habit. Now, this isn't to say that you should make it too easy for yourself, as we need challenge to feel as though we're making progress, but equally, you shouldn't be tyrannising yourself either. One method that might help is adapting the Pomodoro technique to help you manage your time in small chunks. Normally it is to work intensely for about 25 minutes before having a couple of minutes of break. After doing this 4 times, you'd take a longer break. However, when starting out you can shift it to just be 10 or 15 minutes of work before taking a 5 minute break, perhaps affording yourself a longer 15 to 20 minute break after doing 3 Pomodori. As I mentioned before, the key when starting out is to build a routine, and you do this when you build micro habits. We started out by talking about how your general routine is fundamental in helping you be more focused, but as with many things, the devil is in the detail. When you start building yourself schedules and you find you're succeeding in doing the tasks you set yourself, it's useful to go through a process of analysing what's working and what isn't. As you identify what helps, you want to double down to keep these habits in place to help yourself stay focused, while you want to change those that prevent you from focusing. Let's take listening to music while working as an example. For some, music tends to help them focus when working, whereas for others it can detract from the concentration. For me, I find music often helps, so I usually keep earphones in with music on when working. However, I equally know for friends of mine it has the opposite effect, so they prefer to work in silence. Likewise, if you find micro habits set your state to be more productive, then apply these as part of your working routine. For example, when I know I need to focus on something, I'll usually take a few deep breaths as I think about what it is I need to do. For me, this helps set my state and helps me focus in on the specific item I need to focus on. A micro habit I started out doing unconsciously, but have identified as one that helps my productivity and so consciously incorporates into my routine. And remember, when you win and focus on the task to completion, give yourself a little reward. It might just be a small treat, it might be a quick session on a game, or it might be something else altogether. Regardless, it will help reinforce positive behaviours and help you get on your way to be more focused when working. These tips will help you break down what it is you need to do to help you be more focused and concentrated when working. It's not an immediate solution and certainly not a quick fix, but the long term benefits are much more impactful and lasting. So I want to know, do you set up a daily schedule? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this, please like and share this video with others who might find it beneficial. If you aren't subscribed already, be sure to do so with a bell on to ensure YouTube notifies you of the latest uploads. Thanks for watching.